Hi there! Today I wanted to finish up wrapping up what I read in October for Spooktober slash my October TBR and I have four things to talk about today. The first thing that I will talk about is Uzumaki by Junji Ito. I talked about how this book was a straight up horror manga. The book focuses on the main character Kira and in the town that she is spirals start taking over like people are going insane over it and people become obsessed with it. The book is divided into four stories that are connected by the spiral bad guy which is doesn't feel like it would be creepy but Junji Ito finds a way to make it really clever and it works very well and you know it's an original and good big bad because after I read it I talked to my boyfriend about it and whenever we would see spirals walking around wherever we were we were like spirals. It was actually way more gorgeous than I expected like I know that that's what horror is but I don't I don't I didn't think I expected it to be that like serious about it there were literally some parts where I would audibly gasp or audibly go ill or try to like avert my eyes and close them and like look elsewhere because some parts were way too much for me this book really made me realize that what I love most is thrillers and psychological kinds of books more than like straight up gore and horror this was a very interesting book to see that genre but I just think it's not a genre that's really for me as much so I would only really recommend this if you're really into horror like gory horror I wanted to show you some of the art but every page I open up is like disgusting so I don't really want to do that to you in case you're not really into this the next book that I will talk about is Coraline by Neil Gaiman. This is my first Neil Gaiman book that I read and Coraline centers on our main character who ends up in this other world that has all the same people in it that are in her real world and she has to help her family escape from this other world. After reading this I understand why Neil Gaiman is so beloved and his writing is so beloved. It is very simple. It is still very good. So I mean that in the highest compliment. Uh, simple in a very good way. I think when I started this story I really expected something different and I didn't like fall head over heels over it right away. And I didn't even really get into it until I switched over from the ebook version to the audiobook which is read by Neil Gaiman and I kind of wished that I had just read the whole thing on audiobook. So I think what really happened with this book is that I didn't really find the plot as immersive as much as a lot of children's literature that I read. I still really want to read the graveyard book by Neil Gaiman and that's something I must do in the near future. The next book I read was American Born Chinese by Jean Luen Yang. This book centers on three stories which at first seem very unrelated but really come to explain each other towards the end of the graphic novel. And some parts of it had very raw and uncomfortable depictions of racism. I didn't really know as I was reading it how these very raw depictions were going to be resolved. There was five pages left and I was like what's what's gonna happen? How is this all going to come to a conclusion? And then all of a sudden it did and it just hits you right there. He somehow got all of these stories to make sense for the bigger picture. I think there's a lot of hidden meanings in this, a lot of metaphors that you really have to watch out for and if you're reading this and you're not really feeling like you know what's going on, continue reading it because it's all going to make sense at the end. This book explores themes of belonging as well as themes of accepting and connecting, celebrating your heritage. So I definitely recommend this book and you should go pick it up. Last but not least, I read The Walking Dead, Volume 1. My boyfriend picked this one up and then he gave it to me and told me to read it. So I read it for Halloween. Reading this really made me miss the first few seasons of the show. I was so obsessed with the show when it first came out, probably until like season 5. I was like a devoted fan. When my mom would come visit me, we'd literally just stay in the hotel we were at and just marathon through this. So I brought back a lot of those memories that I really value. I think some parts of it felt kind of abrupt and that's why I didn't give it as high of a rating but I can explain that. I'm going to continue reading because I know it's only going to expand from that but I just felt like some parts were really abrupt as in the triangle between Rick, Shane, and Lori. I didn't feel like it was very well explained here and if I hadn't watched 
season one of the show, I wouldn't really understand, like, what's going on here. They didn't really give a backstory as to how the Lori and Shane thing got started, as well as the kind of friends that Shane and Rick were before all of this. I think the main reason why I'm going to continue reading is because just in this one, it already diverges so differently from where the show goes in the first few seasons, so I'd want to see what they do different than what the show did. Another thing that was really wonderful about this was the introduction to this, and I'm going to read you a little bit of it because I thought it really encapsulates what I love about post-apocalyptic stories and what these stories really mean. They're not about zombies, they are about something bigger. It says, to me the best zombie movies aren't the splatter fest of gore and violence with goofy characters and tongue-in-cheek antics. Good zombie movies show us how messed up we are. They make us question our station in society and our society's station in the world. They show us gore and violence and all that cool stuff too, but there's always an undercurrent of social commentary and thoughtfulness. So it basically makes you question the fabric of your society. What makes you you? What makes your society that society? And how things change because of unforeseen circumstances like zombies. And that'll be the end for my second half of my October wrap-up slash spooktober wrap-up. Thanks so much for watching my video and I shall see you in my next one. Hopefully it doesn't go into some really- oh god. Oh god, there's some blah.